Hi guys, my name is Schwarz. Ski touring has been a very important part of my entire life. 25, 30 years ago, it was different. Equipment was super heavy and uh, things have changed a lot. Oh, yeah. This is my latest outfit, 2020. What a difference. So, what is needed to start your ski touring adventure? As the name indicates, it's ski touring, so we need a touring ski. Touring ski plus touring binding and for the climb, skin on the surface, which is detachable. Not to forget touring boots. Besides, of course, we need touring poles and the snow safety equipment comprises of shovel, probe and avalanche beacon. This is always with you as soon as you enter the backcountry. Last but not least, as a mountain guide and for safety reasons, I would highly recommend to wear a helmet on the down. If you are a beginner, I would recommend you to start on slopes. Visit dinafit.com or contact your local dealer or ski resort to find out where ski touring on piste is permitted. Every ski tour starts with the uphill, so we need to prepare our gear for the uphill. First of all, we put on the skins on the ski. We take the end hook here, put them on the ski, fix the skin every 30 centimeter, let's say, and at the end we take the rubber piece, which is flexible, and pull it over. That's it. Make sure it's in the middle, it's not over the edges and it's just fitting properly. Perfect. Skin on the ski, first step. Step two, switch the binding from downhill mode into uphill mode. Pretty simple, press the stopper. Make sure it's not only pressed halfway, it's pressed all the way down and turn the back unit clockwise. Done. Third step, make sure your boot is in uphill mode. It's properly tight, which is pretty individual. So tight means comfort, comfortable for the up. In uphill mode means cuff and shell allow a free range of motion because you loosen the connection. Once that is done, you're ready to go with your boot. So, binding and boot is in uphill mode. Last step and almost ready to go, set up the pole. We open the lever, which allows to adjust the length and set it up according to your body length. As a rough number, it's around five degrees up from a 90 degree angle of your elbow. So, this is my length. Close the lever, ready to go. If you want to use the strap on the pole, Enter from the bottom towards the top. Put the thumb on the left and the fingers on the right. This supports you and helps you save energy. If you want to go without the strap, just grab it on the different positions as these on most of the touring poles come with a long and extended grip zone. Now we are ready to step in and go. Stepping in into a tech system means we come from behind in around a 30 degree angle, hit with the insert, the pins and step down. And don't forget to block the binding. Done. For those who prefer a binding version without a stopper, you set up the binding for the uphill in a little different mode. You turn clockwise. Apparently you don't have to press the stopper. You step in the same way, you lock the binding and then you just have to remember to connect the guide leash to the boot. Let's go. Moving with touring skis doesn't require much. Just remember two things. First, drag your ski and do not lift it. Second, do not lean too much forward and always feel a little pressure on the heel. Then you make sure that the skin 
grips perfectly the snow and it prevents you from sliding. Choose a steady pace and use your arms, say your poles, in a natural way. This is most efficient and prevents you from overpacing. Once the climb gets steeper, you feel more tension on your calf muscles. This can be eased by using the climbing aids. Pretty simple. Take your pole, connect it to the climbing aid and flip it forward. So we use the first climbing aid and it's getting steeper. What we do? We change to the second climbing aid. Connect the pole, flip the climbing aid forward and continue on the highest position. When we see the hill changing from steep to flat, we do not want to go on high hills. So we switch back from the highest position to the medium, or even you change back to the flat position and continue more comfortable on the flat sections. We start doing kick turns once it's getting steeper. It's done in three different stages. First, move the leg, which is toward the hill, in a 90 degree angle to your direction. Second, and most important, transfer the body weight to this leg. Third, turn your ski as close as possible to the other leg. Arrived on top, we need to get out of the skis. So we take our pole, press the lever down and step aside. Or as an alternative and a tip, you step with your foot on the lever, press it down and step out of the binding. No risk to lose the ski because we have still the skins on the ski. But to make sure that nothing happens, we move already the binding from uphill mode, how we arrived, into downhill mode. This means we press the stopper and turn the back unit clockwise, all the way till the pins look to the tip. That's basically it. So, binding is in downhill mode, now we get the skins of the skis. You just pull the skin off halfway, fold it and put it off the other half. This is a little better in windy condition. So at the end, before stepping into the binding to ski down, we need to close our boots. Closing the boots means we pull the buckles tight for better skiing performance. And we lock the boot in downhill mode, which connects the cuff and the shell. So at the end, it skis like a ski boot and it walks like a touring boot. Stepping in from back to front, same movement, pressure down, and now, very important, and many people forget it, just lift the heel two times to make sure the pins and the insert fit perfectly. So lifting two times, stepping down with the heel, that's it. Heel down, which means everything is done. Do not lock the binding. Okay, back at the parking lot after another day of ski touring. We are pretty much at the end. So don't forget the skins in the backpack. They need to be dried. Put them somewhere in a room, so just normal temperature, not directly exposed to heat, and then they will last for a long time. Dry your skis, dry your binding, and have fun every day out in the mountains, as much as we do.